Today I'm behind it with a brand new 2022 Ford Bronco. And this is the Wild Track Edition, which means it comes standard with a Sasquatch package. So that means this Bronco is equipped with 35 inch mud tire standard. They're massive, but they give this Bronco such an amazing stance. Also, you got other off-road goodies such as goat modes and also front and rear locking differentials and many other things. So today, it's below 30 degrees in the Midwest. You can see there's snow out. So I'm gonna tell you more about this brand new Bronco, all the features, how it drives, and I'll be able to test out the capabilities. I'll see how it handles some light and heavy snow. All right, let's get started. All right, I'm behind the wheel. Let's see how good this brand new Bronco is and let me tell you a little bit more about it. First thing I wanna talk about is the presence and the look of this brand new Bronco, which to me is amazing. This Bronco looks like nothing else out there and it certainly doesn't look like a Wrangler. It, there's just a totally different vibe and it is a massive SUV. It's really big. I've driven so many three row SUVs and with this Bronco park next to it, they look tiny. They look like a mini compact SUV versus this. And that's because this Bronco is wide and it's very, very tall. Over 11 inches, close to 12 inches of ground clearance. And it's just a really massive SUV. And when you step inside, you'll realize it too, because it's very difficult to get inside a Bronco, just as difficult as a full-size truck, which is why you want those side steps. The only thing is the grab handle is in a weird position. It's on the center console. When you're grabbing it to get in, it doesn't help you in any way. I wish it was up here, but the, there's airbags up here. So unfortunately they couldn't put it there, but yeah, it, it's a little bit difficult to get in. But once you get in, wow, it's just massive in here. It feels as big as a full-size truck. You're sitting just as high as one. You're looking down on people. The presence of a Bronco is very, very, very understated in my opinion. And if you get up to one, uh, you walk up to one or you drive past one, you're gonna be amazed. I'm, I'm a big fan already, <laughs> right off the bat. The second thing I wanna talk about is the steering and the steering feel, and I love it, especially compared to a Wrangler steering feel. I know a lot of you guys have driven a Wrangler or a Gladiator or a Jeep in general, and you may have noticed that the steering is just so sloppy. There's just so much play. And when I first tested one, I'm like, this can't be right. And then I tested a second one, then I tested a third one, and they're all the same. So when you're driving around town, you know, it's hard to keep the Wrangler straight, and there's just so much sloppiness to it. You don't get that with this Bronco. The Bronco feels like a normal SUV. The steering is tight. It's not sloppy. It actually has a good weight too. Like when I'm making this turn right here, there's take some force to make the turn. So it actually feels good. It feels so different than a Wrangler. So, I mean, Ford did an amazing job with this and uh, it makes the drive so much more you know, enjoyable. Now that I'm sitting here, let me tell you a little bit more about the inside. Very, very utilitarian, that's for sure. And that's not a bad thing for this Bronco, right? You have a big dash, everything's covered with rubber. And that's because you could just spray it down, right? You could spray the interior down. I mean, the buttons on the steering wheel, it's rubberized. The buttons on the dash, rubberized, right? And Ford did this on purpose. A lot of you guys will go off road and you get in and out. You may have the top down, the reins, whatever. It gets dirty, so you can just spray everything off. But this one is also mixed in with very nice technology. For example, you get Sync 4 at a 12 inch screen. The screen is massive and it works really well. Sync 4 works really well if you're navigating through your audio, your navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It works pretty smoothly and what's slick is on the right side, you could also configure that to uh, whatever you want to see, right? So it's kind of dual screens. It's a good multimedia center. And what's good is this one also comes with a 360 view and because of the high resolution, you actually get a good view of what's around your Bronco. Right, what's behind you, what's around you, and with the large screen, you can really see 
what's out there. So, I mean, that that's really, really nice. Now, one thing I wish this Bronco had is, like, some kind of trail, you know, camera view, kind of like what you see on a Tacoma where if you're on a trail, you could actually see front and sides of you, right? That's not available in here, but, uh, but you know what? This system is pretty good. And not only that, in your gauge cluster, you get a large 7-inch screen too, and you can scroll through whatever you want to see, a lot of off-road stuff, a lot of, you know, whatever you want to see, a power distribution, your roll pitch, uh, fuel economy, trip computer, stuff like that. It's all within. So the, it's very utilitarian in here. It's not a luxury cabin, but I can't picture a cabin that, that fits this car as good as this one. There's a lot of grab handles in here. It's pretty spacious because of the removable top. I mean, I have plenty of headroom and plenty of shoulder room, hip room, right? I've mentioned about the visibility, the, the commanding view. I mean, it's really nice in here. About visibility, it's actually fantastic. Even though the hood is so high, you're sitting so high and the windshield is very flat and straight upward. So you get a really good front visibility. The side is even better because the door panels are really low. The back, the back windows, I mean, basically, you, you can't even see the C-pillars all the way back there. So there's no blind spot at all. And the rear visibility is good, too, even with the headrest up from the second row. So there's, there's six aux switches on top. And this is, of course, for your aftermarket stuff. If you want to put on some aftermarket lights, you want to put on a winch, whatever you want to do, you could tie it up to these uh, aux switches. So really convenient. I just... It sounds good too. I just love talking between on and off. Something else I haven't touched upon are these seats, which of course are cloth. They're not leather and they're designed to be stain proof and weatherproof. So if you're spraying down everything, you can spray down the seats too. But the big surprise is how comfortable they are. There's not a whole lot of support. The bolsters, non-existent, but they just feel comfortable. Like you're sitting on a couch in a good way. So the front seats are very comfortable and the back seat surprisingly is just as comfortable. I already mentioned about how it's surprisingly big. There's a lot of space in the second row, but what also helps with that is the, the position of the seats. It's normal position and you don't feel like you're too low to the ground and uh, the seat cushions themselves also feel good. So the seats in here are also beautiful and just makes this, you know, Bronco that much better. I mean, Ford just did such a good job. Ford knows how to design trucks. The rear seats are actually enormous. For me, even as adult as five foot 10, I could fit back there comfortably, but I can't wait to test out a four door. Something else that's quite enjoyable is this engine. This wild track is equipped with the optional 2.7 liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6, and it's producing about 320 horsepower which is a good amount. And for such a big and heavy SUV, I didn't know if it was enough, but there's plenty of torque because it's turbocharged and it's mated to a beautiful 10-speed automatic. And what's amazing about this automatic is I've tested other 10 speeds before, 10 speeds and Fords, and they all gave me this feel where it was too eager to upshift because it's trying to save on fuel economy and you know, when you're cruising along 40, 50 miles per hour, it made those cars feel like they were bogged down. However, I don't get that in this Bronco. I'm cruising right now at 40 miles per hour and it's perfect. It feels perfect. I'm in the perfect power band and there's no, there's no feeling of, I don't have enough power. So Ford really tweaked this 10 speed. And when you do gun it, Put a little, <laughs> put your foot down, give it a little gas. I mean, this Bronco moves, it really does. It's not a slow SUV. And what's beautiful is the exhaust actually sounds good. Even though this is not a V8, this is a V6, but Ford tuned exhaust. So you get a very lively and throaty sound. And <laughs> it's good. You guys can see, I, I, I'm, I'm all smiles right now. This Bronco is really, really impressive so far. I love the exhaust note. I love the, the engine, the power with it, the transmission. Uh, the steering feels so far 
man, this is, this is good. Four knocked it out of the park. All right, now that I'm coming to a stop, the brakes feel normal. Uh, the pedal is not mushy. It's not stiff. It gives a good linear, there's a good linear feel to it. And the Bronco came to a stop without any, without any uh, surprises. So the brakes are also good. Now something that a Bronco isn't so good at, but kind of expected is wind noise or just cabin noise in general. Wind noise, you know, I could hear more from the outside, cars passing by like right now, wind noise overall, kind of expected because of removable tops, right? These are not fixed. Uh, you can remove them, so insulation is not as good as, say, a fixed top SUV, right? Kind of expected, but it's not that bad. Just a little bit louder. And also, because of these massive 35-inch mud tires, kind of expected that road noise is going to be higher, too, and they definitely are, so I could definitely hear them. But, you know, I have the radio off right now, and most of you guys that's driving this, you're, you're not going to care so much about it, right? Most likely, you want to have the top down, the windows down, the the, wind, the doors off, right? You just want to enjoy yourself with an SUV like this, and you certainly can do so. So I would say the sound level is just okay. It's adequate, not the best, but it's quite okay for this SUV. All right, here's a parking lot just with some light snow. All right, I've been here before. I mean, there's only about two to three inches of snow right now, so there is an enormous amount of snow. But you know what? Let's just take the Bronco. Let, let's see how it is. I'm in four wheel drive in normal mode. I'm not even in slippery mode. And by the way, let me talk about the, the goat mode really quick because there is a big dial here and you do have modes for pretty much any situation. Right now I'm in normal, but then there's also uh, eco mode. No one is going to be selecting that. You have sport mode, a little bit more lively drive. You have slippery for snowy or icy condition. Uh, mud and rut, which requires you to be in uh, four-wheel low. And also you have to have sand and you have Baja, which if you're going Baja racing, you want to do that. This will basically just tune the four-wheel drive system and traction control to make sure that you get out of any situation. So I'm just going to stay with normal because I don't think I'm going to encounter anything, but let's see. Let's see here. Yeah, definitely nothing right now. Here's a little little hill with some snow here. Let's try it. Yeah, basically no problem. A little little slipping. Okay, so you can see here a little hill. Let's try it out. No problem at all. Way too easy. Well, it looks like today I'm not going to be able to find anything that's going to be very challenging for this Bronco. Now, as for pricing, this Wild Track Edition is the top trim level for the Bronco. It comes in right around $50,000. And you certainly do get a lot. Standard, you get a Sasquatch package, which I already mentioned about, but also other niceties. For example, heated steering wheel, heated seats. You also get this beautiful giant 12 inch Sync 4 infotainment system, the 360 view camera. Also, you get a wireless charger and you get adaptive cruise control among other little things. So you do get a lot for this package, but of course, if you can't dish out $50,000, you can opt for one of the lower trim levels. So it really depends on what you're looking for. In conclusion, I'm in love with this Bronco. I knew I would like it. I knew it was special, but I didn't know it would be this good. It has blown away all my expectations and checks all the right check boxes. The outside is amazing. It looks like no other SUV out there and it looks very different than Wranglers and that's a good thing. So the outside is very 
manly and just aggressive. I love it. Inside matches exterior. Very utilitarian, but with purpose. All the placement is correct. Everything is covered up. You can wash whatever you want with a hose and it just works out. And you get a good blend of technology. You get a giant 12 inch screen, right? You get a digital gauge cluster. You get all the niceties such as heated here, steering wheel, heated seats, wireless chargers, stuff like that, right? And of course, of course I can't do it now because it's, it's you know, 20 degrees out, but of course you could take out uh, the top, you could take off the roof, you could take off the doors, right? And you could just enjoy the wilderness, enjoy the outdoors. So you get all that. And this Bronco is, is fun to drive. It's fun to drive. The steering is not sloppy like a Wrangler. Steering actually feels good. There's good weight to it. Steering wheel itself is also not bad. The throttle is fantastic. The braking is fantastic, right? And I love the exhaust noise. You put your foot down. I mean, there's a beautiful exhaust noise coming out of coming out of this Bronco, coming out of V6. Um, and you get plenty of thrust whenever you accelerate too. So this Bronco is actually enjoyable to drive as well. You get this amazing commanding view, plenty of space, even inside a two door Bronco. Can't wait to test out the four door and good amount of cargo room in the back too. Unfortunately, a lot of the dealerships are marking up these Broncos by 20, 30, 40, $50,000. And that's unfortunate because it's making uh, Broncos so scarce. Uh, it's making it unaffordable for most uh, Americans. But when that dies down, Right, I bet we're gonna see a lot of these on the roads because it's a fantastic SUV. All right guys, thanks for tuning in. Smash the likes and subscribe to the channel and be sure to check out my other review videos. All right, take care guys, bye-bye.